Hi everyone, my name is Roger Abaton. I am an industrial designer. If you like to design things, you like to 3D print, this is the right place to be. If you feel like you are learning something from my channel, please do not hesitate to subscribe, to like and comment. So I have a vacuum cleaner that I use. I bought it a few months ago and it's Shark Navigator. I have a pad that is working on that vacuum cleaner and uh, I need to replace that part. I can't find that on the market. So what I'm going to do is to design the part that I need, 3D print it and replace it, as simple as that. I'll show you in more detail what the part is and uh, give you some idea how I'm going to proceed to design it and 3D print it. If you want to see the whole process, stick around and uh, stay tuned. This is the vacuum cleaner, the Shark Navigator vacuum cleaner that I like pretty much, I like a lot and I'll show you the part that is working let's pull out this part very easy to detach and uh, there are so many pieces that you can detach and clean separately and that's something that I like so what I did before was to tape that, I just put a tape on of a part that is broke and uh, I was using it that way. But I decided to, to create, design the part myself and replace it. That way I can, I can use my cleaner, my vacuum cleaner on an easier way and yeah, it's more is more professional. So this is what is happening. I hope you guys can see. This piece here is like a screw and uh, it latches inside actually. So you twist it and then it locks inside. But the part that locks inside is broken. So what I'm going to do is I'll just rebuild this and 3D print it so that it can lock properly. Instead of having a plastic tape covering that and holding them together, I'm just going to rebuild the part. So here we are going to create the part that is broken from the vacuum cleaner, uh, my shark navigator. And this is the part that is broken. I was able to, to remove it and we are going to rebuild it. So first of all, I have my digital caliper here. Uh, it's going to help me to take accurate measurement. You don't necessarily need to use this guide, but I think it's just gonna make it quicker for me. So this is to suppose that this is the biggest surface of the part that is working. Let's measure that. Make sure that it's on zero. Take the accurate measurement. And it's 20 millimeter. So that tells me that this section right here is 20 millimeter. There is a screw at the bottom. We will do the bottom later. I want to focus on the top side first. We will do the bottom later. For the medium surface area here, let's measure that and, uh, and see what is the size. Maybe a little bigger. So this is the medium surface here. Let's figure out what is the size. Zero, measure that. 10 millimeter. So we write down 10 millimeter. And now let's measure the smallest surface area. It's about 6, 6, uh, 50, 6.87, but 
Yeah. Let's put 680 or 670. 675. 675. For this surface here, 675. Okay. For what is inside, I don't have a hole inside, I don't think it's very necessary. So I'm just gonna skip it. What I need to know though here. So I think these two teeth are, are what allows the part to lock when you close it. Let's represent them. Wow. And figure out what is the size of it. Zero. Make sure it's always on zero. So I'll put two two seventy five. And for the for the length, it's two. I'll put two two forty. So it's something that is gonna be hard to represent here, so I'm just gonna put it on side and uh, two seventy five two point four three and that is for this uh, that is for the teeth. There's two of them. I think at this point that's mostly what we need um, I'm thinking about this edge here is it really necessary oh it is because I think that is what locks on there it is here it is inside here so that's what locks When you move it, when you move this part here, it can fit and stay stable. So we're going to, to build that as well. Okay, let's, it's gonna be a little bit tricky, but let's see how we can do it. So it's to suppose that it's somewhere here. This is it. Let's see what is the smallest area. It's 3.50, 3.5. 3 so it's, it's to be projected somewhere. It means that you have it somewhere. So since this sketch is very small, I'm just going to represent this small part here so that we have more room to put all the measurement. So what I need here is going to be all this dimension. We just find out is 2.75. The largest area is 5.5. 5.5 mm. Let's see what is the, the width. It's 3.15. Let's say 3.15. That's enough to represent that part. Let's turn this down on the bottom side. this the bottom and we have this hole for that allows the screw to turn inside when you you twist in it and I, like I said I don't necessarily need to represent the same thing here however I can uh, I can consider the length of the hole here and the height is uh, 12 uh, 
almost 13, 13, I say 14, but it doesn't need to be that big. I'm just gonna put 12 now. Let's put 12. Because what this thing does is it allows you to put anything that is flat and then twist it, turn the part and lock it. Let's see what is the, uh, the height of it. It's almost three. Three for the seven. I'm just gonna use two for the seven. Two well I'll use two fifty. But here uh, I'll do another sketch where I can show you can I can show the, the height. Two fifty for the for the width. 250 for a width. Okay. This is okay. 250. And uh, last is going to represent the side view of a part. So you can see it this way. And what is going to look like is something like this. Not necessarily that. Use have this. So this is the biggest area, the middle one, and the smallest one here. It's going to be two side view, but I think we just need one at this time. One will be enough to to explain everything. So, it's, what is the height here? 2.43. I'll put 2.5. A family matter. Mm. 2.5, what about this area here? going to be a bit tricky but we can still do it it's two point it's almost two here it's two and let's make sure yeah it's two millimeter two millimeter here and uh, for the smallest part, let's see the height. It's 2.25, 3 3.25. 3 25. There, right down. Yeah, it says 75. And this is represented here. Okay. The hole that is inside is not that important. I think they use it for manufacturing purpose. Um, for the injection molding, they probably use that uh, to be able to pull out the piece quite easily. Here we're going to 3D print it. I think I have everything I need so far. Let's make sure the. Oh yeah, I need to know the, the thickness of this small part as well. I need to know how thick it is. It's about two millimeter too. Two millimeter, two millimeter. This is two millimeter. Okay. That's enough. That's enough. Okay, we're talking about the hole inside. Just put a note here. Hole was uh, almost three that's too much i think i just put two two millimeter or 2.5 no two is fine 
I'll just put two millimeters. So I think we have all the information we need here to start creating the 3D card file for 3D printing. We have uh, all we need, the biggest surface area, the medium one, the, and the smallest one. We have a height, what each side size measure. We have each one of them. We have a hole for the screw. So we have a, the measurement for the side also. How wide and how long it is. We have everything. I think we should be good for the next step from here. So we are going to design the part in solid work on this one. Uh, so the first thing is to draw the base. I have a technical uh, drawing that we did yesterday. Yeah, like this. So I'm just gonna represent that here with the dimension. The large base dimension is 20 millimeter. 20 millimeter. And uh, the base has a handle that locks also on the outside. I'm just going to represent that here. We have this construction line that will help us indicate and place that. Make sure it's always at the There you go. Next step is to draw the handle. The larger side of the handle is 5.5 uh, millimeter. What I'm going to do is to draw half of that, which is 2.75 millimeter. And then I'll mirror that. Oh, that's perfect. 2.75. Let's mirror that. There you go. Then you have 5.5 millimeter. I'm going to bring it close to the to the circle. The circumference of the circle. Good. Um, the other side is 2.75 millimeter. I'm going to divide 2.75 millimeter by 2. This is 1.37. We do the same thing here. 1.37. Small dimension. 1.37. One point thirty seven five. Let me add that. This is good. Now we know that the distance that separates this edge from the other one is a three point fifteen millimeter. So just going to implement that 3.15 millimeter finger. I'll go. What we have to do now is to connect both edges. Awesome, awesome. Now, what to do next here is to trim. We do a trimming here to connect everything. Be careful. Uh oh, Control Z. Now, moving this to snap fit here. Here we go. It's cool. So, we have that handle placed and uh, we close the sketch. Next thing to do is to extrude. So the thickness of the largest area of the base is uh, two millimeter. It's two point five. Extrude two point five. 
let's place the hole in the back well, let's do it right away control 4 to see the bottom area bottom area sketch rectangle you can decide to sketch from the center if you want that A strip cut to minimal. The diameter of the middle sickle is 10 mm. Then let's do the rest of it here. I'll show you how we form the center. Okay. Small dimension. Okay. Let's do box. And uh, we don't need to measure anything right now. is 2 mm and on top yes we have the smallest sickle which is uh, 6.75 and 2 mm for the, for the height ok we have a smallest area on top and uh, we need to add the, the teeth later so the teeth had almost uh, a rectangle dimension of uh, 2.4 by 2.75 here also we're going to draw a, a construction line click on that transform that as construction line Next thing to do is to draw the line 2.75 divided by 2 2.75 divided by 2 1.375 we already did it before. 1.375 
just going to copy that replace it as simple as that make sure this is a line of fixation and the distance between both here I should let the probably line up as well 2.4 on both sides future s extrude boxes two boxes yes reverse there's also another pieces here that uh, is half cutting it's like uh, an oval shape and I'm going to represent that as well so let's get to this to the circle as well and I'll cut it what I need to do is to cut the circle First, I'm going to combine these two. I'm going to fix this this area. Actually, it should be placed in the in a vertical way uh, so I'm going to address that
So that's almost all we need at this point. The part is not that complicated. I'm gonna combine everything together and uh, let's see if there's no level like combined here. Yeah, let's move on. I think this hole is a little bit big. time to combine everything. It's about time to combine. Do the same fillet here. Let's see what we got here. Um, clear selection. Let's try that on the lobby face. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do for five. Let's do two. One long one. 
Sofa di bawah it and test it see how it works yeah let's save it as a steel file save as stl you can see here and uh yeah you can test it open here let's drag and drop the, the part that we created i'm rotating it 90 degree and uh setting up flat on the on the 3d printer the next thing to do is to set up to make sure we set up the infill the density i want that at 100 uh, we create the printing temperature is 220 because the, the filament that I'm printing, the plastic I'm printing here is ABS and it requires a temperature between 115 and 125. I'm, uh, I'm using 125. The plate is 280 degrees. Uh, support yeah we need support so let's simulate it here. close this have a preview so the preview will, will allow us to see how we will print it okay so this is the support this two light blue part here will be used to support the teeth on top the same thing uh, at the bottom this is a support that will allow to create the part that is hanging from the top it should be good let's make sure it's safe there there you go let's try it So the printing was successful. It worked. You can see. I'll just place that. So the part work. I will. What I will do probably. I'll just reduce the thickness of this. This part. 
I'll just reduce it a little bit, but it should work. I think it is, uh, was it one millimeter? I'll double check. I can make it 75 or uh, 0 0.75 millimeter so that it doesn't because you know when it tries when I try to close it it probably interfere and uh, there's one part that was cut but other than that uh, the part works pretty well so I just need to print one more and uh, it'll be good there we go. So, guess you can even hear the click. So the part is working perfectly now. I hear the click. We did a good job here. We did a very good job. I'll print one more and we should be good to go. Uh, I really like that. Yeah, like I said, if I still want to improve this design, uh, the thickness of this section here that locks in place, I think it was one millimeter, one or two. I'll double check. But we can just reduce it so that it doesn't cut when you try to lock it. You can see that here, this section here was interfering when it was closing. But we can, we can just, we can improve that. We can adjust that and improve it. But other than that, this part worked pretty well. You can hear it click when it closes. So we, we were able to print both both parts now and uh, the, the part that was coming off is tight now. It's closed and locked in place. That's what we want. It's time to test it. See? 